If you have ever flown on a commercial airplane, you are aware of the security measures that are in place. Bags are checked and uh, people are funneled through security equipment and the security team is always looking for harmful objects. And there, this all happens because the truth is there are dark, evil people in the world who have uh, schemes to harm and uh, bring damage to those passengers on the airplane. Well, this is true in a spiritual sense as well. Uh, God is opposed by Satan and his demons, and they are out to trick and deceive the children of God. And this often happens through false doctrine, and this false doctrine is promoted by false teachers and apostates. I'm reminded of John chapter 10, verse 10, that says the thief comes to kill and to steal and to destroy. So because of this, Christians should have an element of readiness. They should be careful to cling to the truth and refute uh, false doctrine. And Christians should have this mind of readiness. They should be eager to cultivate discernment so that they can know what the Bible teaches and also not be blown about by every wind of false doctrine. This is why I'm excited about preaching through the book of Jude. This small epistle has a large message for us. Jude is the author of this epistle, and what's fascinating is he is half-brother of our Lord Jesus Christ. And what's interesting is he doesn't present himself as sibling to Christ. He presents himself as slave to Christ and calls the Lord Jesus his master. This shows us his great humility and also sets him apart from the proud apostates that he wants to warn the church of. And so he loves Christians, he loves believers, and he wants to help them by sharpening their discernment. The main body of the letter describes the false teachers. It's interesting that the false doctrine that they promote, Jude does not address. Rather, he addresses their lifestyle. And this is because ungodly living is almost always connected to ungodly doctrine. In other words, bad behavior is connected to bad theology. And so Jude points out that these false teachers are arrogant. They are rebellious. They're sexually deviant. And they bring divisions among God's people. Also, Jude points out several Old Testament examples. He reaches back into history to mention Cain and Korah and Balaam, false teachers, men who were willing to compromise on the truth and he points out that they perished with God's judgment. While there is a sharp warning in this letter against false teachers, Jude also writes some of the most reassuring words found in Scripture. In fact, the conclusion of this letter says this, Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to make you stand in the presence of his glory, blameless with great joy, to the only God our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen. So even though error is rampant and God's children are assailed by false doctrine, Jude is confident that God will preserve his own. And it's just evident from scripture that none of God's children will be lost. This should give you courage as you stand for the Lord. We should be fortified as we seek to build up ourselves on our most holy faith. And even though our culture drifts into darkness and people around us plunge into sin, we can learn how to be happy as we wait on Christ's return. And Jude is eager to proclaim to us Christ's dominion and the very sure reality that he will return despite the error that is so abundant around us. So it's my prayer as we study uh, Jude together that this short sermon series would be a blessing to you and your family.